And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Tuesday, September 17th. We have a lot to cover on the show today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the dollar sign icon in the chat. This will help create a super chat of any thoughts or comments you may want to see being put out on the live broadcast. I will acknowledge it. And it just makes the show more lively, more entertaining between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. We appreciate your guys' viewership each and every day as we put out content for you guys each and every day. So any contribution you can make to the show means the world to us. And also the other way to help out the show is by going to the link at the bottom of the show segment on the ticker, gsmcpodcast.net. So let's get into what we are going to discuss for today. So we're going to start off the show recap last night's Monday night game between the Eagles and the Falcons. The Falcons coming back late, defeating the Eagles 22 to 21. So we'll get into the specifics of it. In the second part of the show, I'll get into the news that broke yesterday that Bryce Young of the Carolina Panthers is going to be benched, and Andy Dalton will now be the starting quarterback for the Panthers this upcoming week against the Raiders. So we'll get into that. Also, we'll talk about the latest injury news. So it's likely that Cooper Cup is going to go on IR. We'll also talk about Debo Samuel missing a couple of games, one of the wide receivers for the 49ers. So we'll talk about that impact. Already, you know, after week two, Got a ton of major injuries around the league. So, of course, that doesn't change. Then, in the fourth part of the show, we'll talk about the Ravens and their loss to the Raiders. Raiders had a 10-point comeback, so we'll talk about that. And then we'll get into talking about the Sunday night game, uh, the Texans and the Bears, and I'll give you my thoughts on that. A very low-scoring game, but we'll, we will, uh, we'll talk about that as well. So, with that being said, let's get into the first topic, which is recapping last night's game between the Eagles and the Falcons. So... Both teams, you know, one team coming off of a loss, one team coming off of a win. Although I didn't think the Eagles looked particularly good in the game against the Packers. Um, the Falcons just, you know, they didn't look good against uh, against the Steelers. Uh, did You know, Kyle Pitts did score a touchdown in that game, but Kirk Cousins did not look great. However, he, he did look better last night. Last night. It didn't get off to a great start, um, but, you know, Kirk Cousins did finish this game strong and the Eagles were without AJ Brown in this game also I thought it was interesting on the very first drive of the game excuse me on the very first drive of the game they didn't use Saquon Barkley once um very interesting play calling um they I mean Hertz did complete his first pass for 15 yards but then uh there was a penalty and then Hertz ran the ball for one yard, uh, pass to uh, to Covey on the second play, and then it was a designed run on third and ten. Um, very interesting play calling, and the crowd was booing already right off the right out of the jump. So um, Eagles probably weren't happy to hear that. Uh, then the Falcons they got their first possession, and Kirk Cousins didn't really do anything in that offense they went uh they went five plays and they eventually punted then the eagles put together a nice drive got into field goal range but then they opted to go for it on fourth and four at the falcons nine they didn't get it so that's an opportunity that came back to bite them later in the game as you see the uh the score here both teams exchanged punts then the falcons put together a field goal drive eight plays 52 yards almost four minutes of time of possession um you know, some chunk plays in this drive. Cousins connected with Drake London for 19 yards, connected with Algier for 12 yards. Algier had a 15-yard run in this game. Also got banged up uh, at one point. I saw him limping off the field. Um, uh, Cousins uh, and Bijan Robinson, there was a you know miscommunication, I, I guess, on the on the play. And, and it was a fumble, but Bijan was able to recover it. Um, but, yeah, young way Koo who had a nice game, uh, kicked a 39-yard field goal to make it 3-0 Falcons. Then the Eagles put together a touchdown drive, 11 plays, 70 yards down the field, and Hurts connected with Devontae Smith for a 7-yard touchdown to make it 7-3. Then the Falcons, they won a, went on a 15-play, 82-yard drive, a little over five minutes of time of possession down the field, and that was a, yet another young way coup, a field goal to make it 
seven to six. So that's what the score was at the half. And then there was all scoring drives in the third quarter. Uh, the Falcons, they opened it up with a field goal drive. Um, Young Way Koo, a 34-yard field goal to make a 9-7. Then the Eagles, they answered with the field goal drive to make a 10-9. Jake Elliott kicked a 29-yarder. And then this was a big play in the game. Um, well, actually, before that, so the Falcons actually went for it on 4th and 4 from their own 47. And I was saying, why are they doing this? Um, but then it ended up working. See, the thing is, if that doesn't happen, if they don't convert, it's a bad call. But they ended up going for it and getting it. So it ended up working out. So that was a good call by them. Uh, you say that now because it works. Uh, Kirk Cousins connected with Ray Ray McLeod for 12 yards. And then, and Kirk actually missed him earlier in the game. Uh, I think he hit an underneath route with Drake London. But Ray Ray McLeod was behind the defense. So if Kirk saw him, if he had enough time, he, you know, and, and saw him, that could have been a touchdown as well. But then on the very next play, after the fourth down conversion, uh, Kirk Cousins connected with Darnell Mooney for 41 yards, and that ended up being a 41-yard touchdown. So that was a big play in the game, and also big for my fantasy matchup because my friend had B. John Robinson and Drake London, and I had Kirk Cousins. And it was literally like neck and neck at that point. So that really uh, changed uh, the momentum uh, for him you know, going in my favor, which was, which was great. Um, they went for two, didn't get it. But yeah, so it was 15 to 10. Then the Eagles, they answered a nine and a half minute drive. Uh, 17 plays, 70 yards down the field. And uh, the tush push uh, ended up happening as uh, uh, Jalen Hurts' uh, one yard uh, touchdown. And then uh, Saquon Barkley got the two point conversion. Now, originally, Barkley scored a touchdown on third and three from the five, but he was ruled down uh, just shy of the goal line so yeah the eagles ended up scoring so that made it 18 to 15 and then uh the falcons uh they turned it over on downs uh ended up get uh Bijan robinson ended up getting stuffed at the atlanta 39 and interesting because cj garner johnson's helmet came off so that, you know there should have been some kind of flag that was thrown but that ended up not happening um i know some people were saying that um but yeah it looked like the game was over at that point and then this is where, um, you know, Eagle fans are, are just, uh, you know, lo lost some sleep last night. So they got into field goal range. It was third and three. Falcons had no timeouts left. They were at the Atlanta, uh, the, the Eagles were at the Falcons 10. And Saquon Barkley's wide open. It would have been a first down. The game would have been over. And he drops it. So then the Eagles had to kick a field goal, Jake Elliott, from 28 yards out. And at that point, I was like, yeah, the, I, I have a feeling that the Falcons are going to go down the field. Uh, this game is, this is definitely going to bite them. And sure enough, that's what happened. The Falcons went six plays, 70 yards. Cousins hit Kyle Pitts for 11 yards. Darnell Mooney for 21. Darnell Mooney again for 26. He had a big game. Uh, Drake London for five. And then he connected with Drake London on the touchdown uh, from seven yards out to put them up by one. They went for... Uh, they went for two, or no, actually, no, they went, no, they got the extra point because that tied the game. So that put them ahead. And then uh, on the first play of the Eagles drive, uh, Hurts connected with Dallas Goddard for 13 yards, but then he was ultimately intercepted on the next play by Jesse Bates. And the Falcons get the win. And to look at uh, the final stats for both teams, so Kirk Cousins with 20-29, for 241 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Bijan Robinson had a big game, 14 carries for 97 yards. He also had 25 yards uh, receiving in this game. Uh, Tyler Algier, nine carries for 53 yards. Uh, Darno Mooney had a big game, three receptions for 88 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Drake London had six receptions for 54 yards and a touchdown. Ray Ray McLeod, three for 42. Kyle Pitts only had three for 20. Um, Falcons only had one sack in this game. Uh, Jesse Bates, of course, with the game ceiling interception. And then as for the Eagles, Jalen Hurts, 23 of 30, 183 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Saquon Barkley, 22 carries for 95 yards. He also had 21 yards receiving. Jalen Hurts had 13 carries for 85 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, between Barkley and Hurts and also Kenneth Gainwell, they ran the ball for almost 200 yards in the game. Uh, Devontae Smith was their leading receiver, of course, with no A.J. Brown. Seven receptions for 76 yards and a touchdown. Dallas Goddard had three for 38. Um, Britton Covey had six receptions for 23 yards. Um, and the Eagles as a team only had 
one sack. They could not get any pressure on Kirk Cousins. Um, so, yeah, Falcons pick up a win. That's a huge win because next week they play the Chiefs, and, you know, that, that's going to be a tough game if you fall to 0-2. Um, and then as for the Eagles, they play the Saints in New Orleans. So that's going to be a very tough game. But, yeah, um, the Eagles' defense was not great. You know, could not get any pressure, like I said. Also, the back end struggled, giving up those big plays. Um, yeah, I really did not like – I really have not liked what I've seen from the Eagles so far. You know, I was high on them going into the season. I know they won in week one, but it wasn't pretty. You know, and Jalen Hurts continues to throw to turn the ball over. Now, that was late in the game, but, um, yeah, I, I, have, uh, I have some concerns with the Eagles. They, they, uh, they don't look right at the moment um you know Saquon still had a good game but that drop was crucial and you know it's just it's one of those things like look you go for the win I get it but you know the Falcons had no timeouts left so if you run the ball I mean they have even less time uh, to go down the field as fast as they did um so you probably run the ball there, drain the clock, and then you have, you know, Jake Elliott kick the field goal. Um, but they didn't do that. I mean, they, Barkley should have caught it, but, um, you know, I, I think he's he's the least of their problems right now. You know, they brought in Bryce Huff to be that replacement to Hassan Reddick. Doesn't seem like he's really living up to that potential, living up to that replacement. Um, the back end is struggling, and you know the offense misses AJ Brown. I I think that's one thing I could point to is is that, um, yeah, it's just they they, they don't look good right now. Uh, as for the Falcons, I, I mean, that was a big win for them. I give Kirk Cousins a lot of credit for that game winning drive. Um, I mean, because they went right down the field. The Eagles were were just you know making sure they weren't giving up the big plays, but it didn't matter. I mean, the Falcons just tore apart that defense on that last drive um but that's a big momentum game for them because you know you don't want to go zero and two and then going up against the chiefs uh which is a home game next week but they were able to get the job done and uh yeah that's uh you know and, and kirk cousins it's, it's interesting so troy aikman was talking to him and cousins says he's healthy but he's not 100 percent yet which i thought was interesting um but you know what? It's going to take some time, but that this definitely gives him and that team a lot of confidence uh, going forward, because uh, Philly's a hard place to play. And once again, I say, and we're going to talk about another matchup a little bit later in the show. But um, you know, I, I said, well, Kirk Cousins played well against the Eagles last year, but now this is with the new team. I don't know if he's going to be able to get it done. And it's on Monday night. He got it done. He got it done. Him and the Falcons got it done. And, uh, yeah, so congrats to them on the win. And as for the Eagles, uh, they got some things that they got to clean up. Uh, so we'll see what happens. And, and A.J. Brown is expected to miss more than just this week. So that's big uh, going forward. So we're going to take our first break. And when we come back, we will talk about the Panthers benching Bryce Young. We'll talk about the impact of that going forward for them. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 